Hey, welcome back to The Point Podcast. Today on The Point Podcast, we're talking about the biblical prophetic timeline that God has given us to know the events of the end times. We're also going to talk about the connection between Rosh Hashanah and the rapture. And we're going to take a little bit of a deep dive into this idea uh, or this concept that Jesus gave us of this generation. And so all of this here on The Point Podcast. So let's get to the point. Okay, so I just want to say that we serve a good God, a God who does not want us to be ignorant of the things that are about to take place and that are taking place in the day and age that we live in, right? So we call this, uh, the day that we're living in, the last days, the, the end times, right? And so all of prophecy really does help us to understand the current events. And so the Old Testament prophets, uh, we have the words of Jesus, the New Testament uh, historian, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, all of these have events that are taking place in the end times, in the days that we're living in. Jesus wants us to know, God wants us to be aware of his plan as it unfolds in the day that we're living in. And so one of the greatest uh, grids or prophetic timelines that he gives us is found in the Jewish feasts, okay? There are seven Jewish feasts that we find in Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, these seven Jewish feasts give us a prophetic grid to understand God's plan of redemption. The first four feasts have already been fulfilled in the life of Jesus and the church. The next three feasts, they haven't been fulfilled yet, but I believe we are going to see the fulfillment of these coming very soon. So let's talk about those for a minute. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5, talks about Passover. If you remember back in Exodus, the Passover event when the Jews were being rescued or being delivered, right, out of Egypt and out of Egyptian slavery, the, they took the lamb, they, the lamb was killed, and the blood of the lamb was put on the doorpost. Because those homes had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the death angel passed over those homes, and they were to, able to escape the judgment of God. Well, in the same way, Jesus is the Passover lamb. And those that have Jesus, those that believe and trust in Jesus and what he accomplished with his life, his death, and his resurrection, they, well, they, the fulfillment of the Passover is in Jesus Christ. And so, the first feast is the Passover fulfilled in the life of Jesus. The second feast is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and it points to a sinless life, and again points to the Messiah. This is found in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 6, talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So this really does refer to the time that when Jesus was in the grave. That's when the, the Jewish Feast of Unleavened Bread took place. So the Passover and immediately following the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The third feast took place on Resurrection morning, and so they are right behind each other. The, the third feast is the Feast of First Fruits, found in Leviticus 23.10. Leviticus 23.10 talks about Jesus' resurrection, and the New Testament calls Jesus the first of first fruits, the first fruits of the resurrection. And so Jesus was the first to, to uh, come from the grave and would be the first fruits of those to follow. Okay? So the first three feasts literally fulfilled in the life of Jesus. The fourth feast is the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost. Do you recognize the name of Pentecost? It literally means 50. And so 50 days after the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Feast of Pentecost. It's the Jewish remembrance of the harvest, right? And so it looks forward to the harvest and really does appreciate the harvest that comes from God. Well, we recognize there was a great harvest on the Feast of Pentecost, and it was uh, reserved, preserved for us in Acts chapter 2. 3,000 souls, a great harvest of souls, came forward and put their faith in Jesus Christ at the Feast of Pentecost. And so we see in the Bible, the first four feasts on the Jewish calendar are a prophetic grid or timeline have literally been fulfilled in the life of Jesus and the church. The next feast also will find its fulfillment in Jesus and the church. It's the Feast of uh, Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets we find in Leviticus 23-24. And this is the feast, also called Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. This takes place in the fall. It's the first of the three fall feasts. It's not been fulfilled yet, but it will be fulfilled when in the rapture of the church, when Jesus comes for his church. 
The sixth feast is the Day of Atonement. It is a feast that points to the second coming when all that is wrong is made right and those that are in the world are brought to Christ. The Feast of Atonement, found in Leviticus 23:27. The last feast is the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Booths, found in Leviticus 23:34. This points to the future fulfillment of eternity with God, where God will dwell with His people. They will be with me, and I will be with them. Uh, the Old Testament talks about this. A beautiful picture of this is in Micah chapter 4, 1 through 7, and it's the fulfillment of the feast that is to come, the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles. So the first four are already fulfilled in the life of Jesus and the church. The next one, the Feast of, uh, the feast of Trumpets, is the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, right? It is the uh, there's a connection between Rosh Hashanah and the rapture that we need to kind of think about and talk about because this is becoming more and more popular, especially in the day that we're living in. So there are different names that are given to the Feast of Trumpets. This idea of the Feast of Trumpets the, in the Jewish tradition gives it different names and it means different things, but you recognize these. I get some of this material information from Dr. Jimmy Evans from The Tipping Point. You can look at his resource and from different resources, uh, different commentaries on the internet. So, do your study. Don't just take my word for it. Do your study about the connection between Rosh Hashanah and the Rapture and the Jewish grid or the Jewish prophetic grid known as the Jewish Feasts. Okay? So let's look at a couple of names for the, the Feast of Trumpets. The first name is Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah. It means the day of blowing, right? Because you blow the trumpets or blow the shofar. I wish I had a shofar so I could blow it for you. Or it's called the day of awakening blasts. And this is pointing to the rapture. Okay, even in Jewish tradition, and they, I don't know if they're aware of it or not, but it's actually pointing to the rapture event. When the trumpet sounds, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17 says this. You remember this verse. It says that when the, the, Jesus is going to come, he's going to step out onto the clouds, the archangel is going to give a shout, the trumpet's going to blast, and then the dead in Christ will rise first, and those that are alive shall and remain shall be caught up with them in the air. And so this day of blowing, it's a day of blowing the trumpet, or the day of the awakening blast. For thousands of years, listen to this, for thousands of years the Jews have called Rosh Hashanah the day of the awakening blasts. And that is exactly what's going to happen at the rapture. The day the, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and they will be roused from their sleep, or from their grace, and they will be raised incorruptible. Yom Teruah, great name, points to the rapture. Another name is Yom Yadim. Yom Yadim, right? It means the day of judgment. Yom Hadim. The Jewish prayers during this feast, the Jewish prayers during Rosh Hashanah, during the Feast of Trumpets, emphasize it as a time in which the world is to be judged or put on trial. Okay, so in Hebrew tradition, Deem, right, Yom Hadim, uh, means uh, judgment. The Jews believe Rosh Hashanah represents a period which God weighs the rights and wrongs of uh, the world or from the previous year. And so in Revelation 22, 12, and 13, it says this, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, and to give to everyone according to his work. And so, the Jews believe that this is going to be a day of judgment. It's going to be a day when God comes and says right and wrong. And we know right and wrong is based on those that have accepted Christ. And so, we understand this to be a rapture event. The rapture will be a day when Jesus judges the earth. And it's going to be based upon those who believe and those who don't believe. All right. Another name, Yom Hazi Kairan. Yom Hazi Keram. It means the day of remembrance. The day of remembrance. During this feast, Jews pray that God will remember them during the coming year. And so they look at this as a day of judgment, that God's going to judge the good and the bad from the previous year, but they look at this also as a day to look ahead, that God would remember them in the coming year, that He would be faithful, that He would prosper them. Excuse me. In Luke 17, 34 and 35, it says, I tell you, and that night that there will be two men in one bed, the one will be taken and the other will be left. It goes on to talk about two women in the field grinding together, two men in the field working together, that one will be taken and one will be left. And it's all about this idea that God is going to remember. God knows those who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, 
and he will remember and be faithful to honor the promise that he's made to them at the rapture during this feast of trumpets. All right? Now, this is one that we've talked about before. It's the wedding day of the Messiah. This is another name that is known by the wedding day of the Messiah. You want to read more about this? Go to Revelation 19. Really, all of the Bible, especially in the New Testament, Jesus used the metaphor of the wedding feast over and over and over again. And it points to this rapture event when the groom comes to get his bride. When this event, when the groom comes to get his bride, is during the Feast of Trumpets. It's during Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. It's when Jesus comes and gets his bride. We know it as the rapture. It's the next event on this, well, in this marriage feast, right? And so we look at this. Uh, when a groom was going to marry his bride, he left his father's house with a bride price, a dowry. He would go to and meet with the, the father of the bride, and as he met with the father of the bride, he would drink a glass of wine to ratify this covenant, this contract, right? The, the wedding, the betrothal. He would drink this glass of wine with the bride and with the family, and he would not drink again from that glass until he came to get his bride. Jesus talked about this. In Luke chapter 22, when Jesus was uh, at the Last Supper with his disciples, he passed the cup and he said, I will not drink from this cup again until we are together again in my Father's house. So after paying the price and making that promise, the groom left for his father's house where he would prepare a chapa, where he would prepare a small house or a room for him and the bride to live in. Jesus talked about this in John chapter 14. He said, don't be, don't be dismayed. Don't let your heart be grieved because I'm going to go away for a little while, but I'm going to come back and get you because at my father's house, there are many mansions. There are many rooms. There are many chapas. Right? And so, when I'm going to prepare that for you so that when it's ready, I'm going to come back and get you so that where I am, there we may be also. It's all about the Jewish wedding. And the Jewish wedding, the wedding of the Messiah, is Rosh Hashanah. It is the, it is the Feast of the Trumpets. It's the fifth feast in the Jewish calendar. Okay? So, in this idea that the Chapa, for him and the bride to live in, only after it was ready, only after the, the groom was done preparing the Chapa, uh, the father would approve it and say, okay, it's ready, go get your bride. Only the father knew when that time of approval would come. And so Jesus is the groom. The church is the bride. He has bought his bride by paying the price for our sins with his life. He is at the father's house right now preparing a place for us, his bride, right? And at the father's word, when the father approves and says, go, it's ready, go get your bride, the rapture will mark the Christ's return for the bride. It's called the rapture event. It clearly points to the rapture. It's also called the day which no one knows. You recognize this coming from Jesus' lip. This is really interesting. I hope you guys, are you paying attention? Is this too much information? I hope that this is kind of piquing your interest a little bit. We're talking about the connection between Rosh Hashanah and the rapture event, which is the next event on the prophetic timeline. Okay, so this idea of the day which no one knows. The Feast of Trumpets is a two-day feast that is attached to the new moon. That's why no one knows when it's going to happen. We know where when it happens, like in the season, but we don't know exactly when the new moon is going to be. That's why it's a two-day feast. The ancient Jewish calendar was a lunar calendar, and based on the cycles of the moon, Back before people understood the movements of the plants and the cycles of the solar system, the Jewish holidays, these Jewish holidays were, were attached to the moon cycle. Most were on the full moon, except Rosh Hashanah, or <clears throat> the Feast of Trumpets, was attached to the new moon, not the full moon. So, it's easy to tell when the moon's full, right? You can tell that. But it's trickier when the moon is not full, when there's a new moon, because it, goes, it completely disappears. And so the way that Jewish tradition had it is that when two people witnessed the new moon, that there was a sliver they could see the new moon, then those two people went and told the high priest, then the feast began. The feast of the trumpets began on the new moon, but nobody knew when that was going to happen. So it was a varying degree. Okay, so once the sighting, the, the shofar would be blown, the feast of trumpets would begin, and the rest of the feast would happen. Mark 12, 13, 32 said, no one's going to know when this is going to happen. 
No one knows the day or hour, only the Father. So when the wedding feast is done, when the, God, the Father says that the chuppet is ready, the groom is going to come get his bride, no one knows the day or hour because, well, because we're waiting on the new moon, on the new light. We're waiting for Jesus to come and get his bride. Are you guys getting excited about this? I hope you are. I hope you are. The rapture is the next prophetic event in human history. It's the ne next prophetic event to take place. It and if it follows, if this event is following the prophetic calendar of the Jewish festivals, or the Jewish feasts, then it follows also that it's going to happen on Rosh Hashanah. It's going to happen on the Feast of Trumpets. More interesting stuff. More interesting things to talk about. So, there is a connection from Jewish tradition and from biblical timeline, the, the prophetic grid of the Jewish feasts, between Rosh Hashanah and the rapture. But even more, uh, there's this little phrase that Jesus gives us on this idea of this generation. There are many today that think that not only are we living in the last days, right, that we're living in the last hours of the last days. And it is attached to this idea of this generation shall not pass away. In Matthew, 20, uh, excuse me, Matthew 24, 34 and Luke 21, 32, Jesus says this, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Right? What things? Well, Jesus just spent the entire chapter talking about what's going to happen in the end times. All the things are going to happen during the, during the uh, generation of the end times. This generation shall not pass away until these things take place. What things? Go back and read the beginning of Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 22. And in chapter 21, excuse me. These events are going to take place. And you can see, this is like the, the front page news today. These are the things that are happening today and they're happening in rapid succession. And so Jesus says when these things are happening this, in this generation, well, this is when the Son of Man is going to come, Okay. This, uh, they attach this generation to the, when uh, Israel was made a nation again in 1948. Okay? There's a miracle that happened in 1948. Israel had not been a nation in almost 2,000 years. 2,000 years it had been since Israel was a nation. But Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8 talks about this, this miraculous event that takes place in the end times. When Israel would be born again as a nation it would come into fruition or come into being once again. It's never happened that it was born twice. This is what happened. Isaiah 66, 8. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? So, this idea of a generation or a lifetime, many people are trying to put these things together. and you know, We don't know for sure or for certainty, but it's worth us taking a look at because of the urgency of the times in which we're living in. The idea of a generation being 70 years uh, and 80 for good measure or good strength is found in Psalms chapter 90 and verse 10. It says the days of our lives are 70 years and if by reason of strength they are 80 years. <clears throat> so taking that into account, we look at 1948 being the beginning of this generation. You count ahead, 70 years from 1948 would have been 2017. May the 14th, 2017, to be exact. So, May the 14th, 2017, we started the 70th year in, in 2017. Now, we're in 2021. So, now we are in the 73rd year of the this generation for those that kind of attribute this, okay? So, Matthew 24, 34, Luke 21, 32 say that the second coming, they refer to the second coming, not the rapture event. So Jesus says all these things are going to take place, then the Son of Man will come. So what he's saying is, this generation is going to be alive for the second coming. The second coming is seven years on top of, well, this generation. And so today, if we're looking at this being the 73rd year, we add the seven years for the tribulation, that gives us 80 years. So we're look, we are living in the last hour of the last days. And that means the rapture event is like at any time. Could be at any time. So, unbelievable things are happening. If you're paying attention to Scripture, paying attention to current events and seeing how things are aligning in the world today to, to really prove that Scripture is true. <clears throat> as we think about, I wanna, as we close, I want to bring this together, okay? 
So let's try to wrap our minds around this. Follow my logic here. Follow the logic. If we assume that the timeline for this generation started in 1948 and it's been 73 years since then, we had seven years for the tribulation, we are in the year 80. We are looking at year 80 right now as seven years would have to take place after this year. Psalm 90 to 10 refers to as a strong generation. So logistically, we're at the last hour of the last day. Are you listening? So, furthermore, if we assume that the Jewish feasts communicate a prophetic timeline for humanity, like we talked about, and we recognize that the Feast of Trumpets does indeed refer to the rapture event, like we talked about, right? We can assume, or we assume that the rapture will happen in this generation, like we just talked about. Well, if we look at it starting in 1948, 73 years ago, we, we may come, or have to come to a conclusion, that we are in the last hour of the last day, and that Rosh Hashanah, this year or next, is going to be when the rapture event takes place. Now, I know many of you are pushing back from the table right now and saying, we can't say this, we can't say with certainty. You're right, we can't. But I go back to what I said at the beginning of this podcast. I believe God does not want us to be in the dark, and that He has given us enough to understand, to have wisdom. He talks about it in Revelation. For those that have wisdom, pay attention, look and see what's going on. That He has given us enough information for us to recognize that the time is at hand. That we, the time is at hand. That we are in the last day. And because we are in the last day, we need to be ready. And so the question is, are you ready? Not only are you ready, and I hope you are. Do you know that you are, that if something were to happen today, if Jesus were to come today, that you would be going with Him in this rapture event? That we would be caught up together with Him in the air? We can know that for sure. The Bible says that if we have believed that Jesus has risen from the grave, that God sent Him, right? Sent Him to die on the cross to take the penalty of our sin, to pay that price, and that we can trust in Him by faith, apply that price that He paid to our lives, that we can have a relationship with Him, forgiveness of our sins, and a restored and reconciled relationship with God, we can know that for sure. Are you ready for when this event happens? I hope that you can say yes. But the next question is, does everybody that you know, are they ready? So the mission then becomes, now that we're ready, to make sure everybody else is. Because I believe, church, I believe, podcaster, point, pointster, point podcaster, that we are living in the last day. We are living in those days. We've got to have a sense of urgency about sharing this message. And so, at the end of this, I want you to sh hit the share button. Hit that share button and let everybody know that it, it is time. They need to pay attention and come to a realization that they have need of reconciled relationship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else is more important. That is what needs to become urgent in this day and age we live in. I want to end with this. And so I want to refer you back to a previous podcast on the God and May God War. And so if you go back and look at the previous podcast that I did on the God and May God War, and as we think about the events that are unfolding, on my way to church today, on my way to do this podcast, I heard a a somewhat disturbing report, but it's not disturbing if you understand what's going on in the end times. The Gog and Magog War is talked about in Ezekiel 38 and 39, and I believe, as I described on that podcast, that it is a precursor event to the rapture, that it's going to happen right at the end of, well, at the end of the church age, or at the beginning of the tribulation. So, the Gog and Magog War happens to me, and as I look at the events happening, it happens right when the church is raptured or right before the church is raptured. And it is the event that gives rise to the Antichrist. The world is going to be look at the uh, a, a world power that is coming on the scene that will, that will bring certainty in the midst of worldwide chaos because of the Gog and Magog War. The Gog and Magog War is when Turkey, Russia, Iran, and Syria are going to come against, and others in their coalition are going to come against Israel, and God is going to supernaturally deliver Israel from their, well, from their attack. Okay? This is the Gog and Magog War. Ezekiel 38 and 39, go and look at it. Well, on the way here today, I, I heard a report from Israeli Prime Minister Bennett. Today is September the 1st, 2021. 
the Prime Minister is, uh, of Israel, Bennett, was said that there are eight weeks from today, it, Iran will have a nuclear weapon. We'll have all of the materials they need to form a nuclear weapon. And he also said that Israel cannot allow that to happen because Iran has stated that their sole purpose in life, their sole purpose is to bring an end to Israel. And so Israel, because of this existential threat to their to their lives, has to do something about it. Ezekiel 38, the Lord tells the enemies of his that he's going to put a hook in their mouth. I believe that this is the hook, that the Israel is going to have to attack Iran to make sure that they don't get a nuclear weapon to come against them, that this is going to cause the beginning of the Magog War, the Gog and Magog War, and God is going to supernaturally preserve Israel in the midst of this. And I believe that when this happens, if, if diplomacy can't be reached or diplomatic solution can't be done, this event is going to unfold before our eyes, and I believe this could be the Gog and Magog War. Church, the events of pro the prophetic timeline are right here. We cannot delay telling others about Jesus and to make sure that we are ready for this event. I don't know about you, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm not trying to give you undue alarm, but what I'm trying to do is to encourage you to be ready and to tell everybody else that you know, that you come into contact with, to be ready for these events as they unfold. This should be a source of encouragement, a source of hope for us. And I just want to, again, celebrate and thank God that He has allowed us to have wisdom and to understand the events of the last days as they unfold before our eyes and that we have an opportunity to know to know that we know that we know that we're going to be okay, that we are going to escape the wrath of God in the tribulation period because of this rapture event, that when the trumpet blows, that we will be caught up in the air with Him and that we will be forever together with Him, the bride reunited with the groom. I don't know about you, but that's worthy of celebrating. Amen? Let's pray and then uh, let's go and tell others about this event that is certain to come, and I believe it's coming very soon. Father, thank you again for today, for the time that you've given us in your word. Just thank you that you are so good to us and letting us know of these things that are happening even in the day that we're living in. Father, I believe with my whole heart that you do not want us to be uncertain or to have confusion or doubt about these things, that you have given us the prophetic timeline, that you have helped us to understand how this, uh, the grid of the Jewish feast relates to your redemption plan. And Father, that we are to understand the sense, with a sense of urgency the day and the generation in which we're living in. Father, are you going to come next, next week on Rosh Hashanah? I don't know. But Father, if you do, I'm ready, and I pray that all of us are. Father, I pray that we would share this broadcast, that we would tell everybody that we know about the events that are soon to unfold before our very eyes. And Father, I pray that when we're caught up together with you in the air, that we are ready for that event. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. By the way, I just wanted to let you know, today's September the 1st, 2021. Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, this year begins Monday, September the 6th, about uh, noon Eastern Time to Wednesday, September the 8th, noon Eastern Time. I'm not saying that the rapture is going to happen somewhere between Monday and Wednesday, but guess what? It could. Are you ready? God bless you. I'll see you next time on The Point Podcast. <laughs>